Today, I'll be showing you how to have animations that are different for each team. To start, go to the Plugins tab at the top left and click on Build Rig. This should be a default plugin that comes with Roblox Studio. Now you have the option to choose between an R15 or R6 rig, which are the different character types. I'm going to choose R15 and insert a block rig into the game. Take note that any animations you create with one rig will not be compatible with another, so you cannot use an R15 animation for an R6 character and vice versa. Now, still under the Plugins tab, click on the Animation Editor. Now a new GUI should appear on screen. Once you select the rig, it'll prompt to type in an animation name, so I'm just going to call it Walking1 and click Create. And now we can get started with creating the animation. To select multiple parts of the character at one time, you can hold the Control button or Command on Mac and click on multiple parts of the character, and then you could move them all at the same time. I'm going to be making a very basic animation, since this is mainly a tutorial for allowing animations that are different depending on each team. So if you'd like to learn a lot more about animations, especially in depth, I'll put a guide to the developer form in the description below that does exactly that. So now that we've moved our character a little bit, you notice that these things appear in the timeline of the animation editor. This is what is known as a keyframe, which indicates that something has been set or changed at that given time. When the animation plays, It'll go from left to right on the timeline, transitioning between the position of the character at one keyframe to the next. So if I go on over here to 10 frames in, and I start moving the character some more, so let me just move this back inwards, and then I'll move the other arm back inwards. I'll make the leg go a little bit more forward, and this leg will go more backwards. And now over here at frame 10, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to put the other one to the back. And now we have one part of an animation. It's going to be a very basic walking animation. So now that we have this part of it, I'm going to go over here and copy the first keyframes that we created. And since this is 10 seconds in between, or sorry, 10 frames in between, I'm going to go on over to frame 20, so that's the same amount of time, and paste it. And then I'm going to paste this part over here and do the same thing, except at the very end at 30. So now once we click play on this animation, it's going to go all the way through. Now we can finalize our animation by clicking the three dots over here. And before we export it, hover over set animation priority. There are four different options here, with some being higher priority than one another. So the order it has in here is from lowest priority to highest priority. So for example, if your character isn't moving, the animation that would be played would be called the idle animation. But then if your character starts walking, it overrides that idle animation and it doesn't wait for it to finish, which would make it higher priority. Any animation that tries to run over a higher priority one will have to wait until the higher priority one stops first. So for action, if you had something like someone throwing an object and someone was trying to move at the same time, the animation where they were throwing the object would not be overwritten. So because this is walking, I'm just going to select movement, and now I can click on the three dots again, click on export, and now I can change the name of the animation, I can add a description, and I can choose for it to be on my profile or in another group, but I'm just going to leave it on my profile and click on submit. Once you've done that, you can go to the link of the animation by clicking here, which we will need later when we create the script, and it can also be found inside of your inventory right here. The script we create in this part of the video can also be found as a model in the important link section in the description. However, you will need to change several parts of it to make sure that it works for you. Before we start writing, make sure that the animations you are using are either uploaded to your profile or it's uploaded to your group if this is a group place that you're using the animation for. Since Roblox does not allow you to currently use animations that you did not upload. Also, if you create an animation with an R15 character model, you cannot use it for R6 and would need to create a separate one, so there will be something inside of the script that you can add if you are allowing multiple different character styles in your game. So now to start the script, you can hover over the server script service inside of the Explorer, which can be enabled through the View tab at the top left of the screen. Click on the plus button and add a script inside. We can now get rid of the text and get started. 
To start, I'm going to reference the Players service, which contains a list of every single player inside of the game. Now I'm going to reference the Team service, which contains a list of every single team in the game. And just in case you're not familiar with it, these are variables, and we're using it so that we can make a shorter word be equal to something else, so we don't have to constantly type this out every single time we wanted to refer to the Players service. And now after the teams here, I'm going to reference the two teams we have inside of our teams folder and make sure you create this for however many teams that you have. So I'm going to say local team one is equal to teams.team1 and local team two is equal to teams.team2. So I'm making it equal to the name of the team that is directly inside of the teams folder. And in addition to this, I'm going to create a list with all the teams. So I'm going to say local team list is equal to teams colon get teams. I know we're saying teams a lot. And this is going to be used so that we can check whenever someone joins a team so that they get given the correct animation. And now we can start writing some functions. We're going to have a couple of different ones to handle each part of the process. So to start, I'm going to create a function that will be for changing the animations of the player's character as soon as they swap teams or respawn. Before we add into this one, let's make sure we have a way to activate it. So I'm going to start by going down here and saying players.player added. So whenever a player joins the game, whenever a player is added to the player service, we're going to connect it to a function. And inside of here, I'm going to put a parameter of players so we can reference the player that joined. And now inside of here, I'm going to say player.character added. So whenever the player's character loads into the game, we're going to run another function and their character can be referenced by saying char. And now that we have that, we can run the change animations function. So I'm going to say change animations and I'm going to pass the player into it. So the script knows which player will have the animations applied to them. And then below this, we're going to write something that will handle whenever someone joins a new team. So I'm going to write a loop that starts off by saying for I comma team in pairs. So basically for almost saying for each team inside of the teams folder, and you can have these as whatever you want. I'm just renaming it to team so that it's easier to look at. And inside of the brackets at the end here, I'm going to put the table that we're going through. So we're looking through the team list table. And now inside of here, I'm going to say do. So for everything inside of the team list, we are going to do something. And and what we are going to do is check when a team has a new player added to it and we are going to connect it to the change animations function also. And now that we have this, we can write the main parts of the change animations function. So in order to change the animations that a player has, we need to access the animate local script inside of the character, which can be seen on the screen right now. In order to do that, we have to reference the player's character. And I'm just going to label the ends here, just in case it gets confusing later on. So I'm gonna say ends the change animations function. So now I'm going to reference the character by saying local character is equal to player.character or player.character added colon wait. So now what this is going to do is whenever we say character, it's going to be equal to the player's character, or if it hasn't properly loaded in yet, then it's going to wait for their character to load. So now I'm going to reference the character's humanoid, which is what will allow us in the next line right after this one to see all of the current animations that are running. So after this, I'm going to say local animation tracks is equal to humanoid colon get playing animation tracks. So now if we put these animation tracks into a loop, so I'll say for I comma track in pairs, and then I'll list the table. So it would be animation tracks, whoops, animation tracks. And the reason why we are looping through this is so that we can cancel or stop any of the current animations that the player currently has playing. And you don't need to add this part if you don't want to, but we'll do this to make sure that none of them continue looping. So now first I'm going to say do. So now we're going to say track colon stop. So that's going to stop the animation track from continuing once it gets to this point of the script. So ends the animation tracks loop. And now we can move on to the next lines and continue. So down here, I am going to reference the animate local script inside of the player. Now I'm just going to move this forward a line and you can select something and hit tab if you want to indent all of them. And this is so that since everything is red on this side, 
so we can distinguish much more quickly between our variables and other parts of the script. And now this animate local script is what contains every single animation that the player has by default. I'm going to say is equal to character wait for child and I'm going to put in here animate. So whenever we say animate, it's going to look through the character and it's going to wait for something that is called animate. And now below this is where we are going to reference the new animations. Now take note that R6 and R15 also have different animations inside of this local script. So I'll show on screen the differences between the two. Because if you reference in one part of the script right here, a certain animation track that one of the rig types does not have, then it might stop the script at this point because it can't find what you're referencing inside of the character. So I'll show what you can do in that case. But to start, I'm going to select something that both character types have, and that's going to be the run animation. So I'm going to say local run anim is equal to animate dot run and make sure that it is case sensitive. So the capitalization is exactly the same or else it will not work dot run a nim. And because I don't have this currently in the workspace right now for my character, since I need to play test, I will also show that on the screen so you know where it is. And now we can get to changing it. So if I go down here and I say if player dot team is equal to team one, which is the team that we referenced up here at the top, then we can make something happen. So I'll say then run a nim dot animation ID. So we're going to be changing the ID of the run animation to the one that we created earlier is equal to. And now we can go over to the website and let's choose the one that we created earlier and go up into the web address bar and copy the number that's in there. From there, go back into studio and make sure to put this into quotation marks, RBX asset ID. And I'll also have this inside of the model that I provide for the script in the description colon, and then now two forward slashes, and then paste in the number that you have. So then what I'm going to do here, let's say that the person isn't on that team, we're going to change it to something else. So I'll say ends the if player dot team, then statement. So now we are going to write an else if statement. So if the script goes through here and this isn't the player's team, we could say else if player dot team is equal to team two. So if they're on team two instead of team one, then we could change the run and animation ID to equal. We'll do one that I created a few days ago as another test. And it's also not very good either, but just for testing purposes. So RBX asset ID on slash slash, and then we'll paste the number in right there. So now at this point, it should work when we go over here and click on the home tab at the top and click on play here. I start on team one and I have the goofy little animation that I created earlier in the video. And if I swap over to team two, I'll have the animation that I created the other day. And let's say I go back and swap over to team one again, I have the other animation. So if you are trying to change instead animations in one rig type that the other rig type does not have, here's what you could do. If we go back over here to the humanoid reference, bring it down one line and add another reference. We are going to call this rig type. So I'll say local rig type is equal to humanoid dot rig type. And this is what will allow us to know if the player's character is R6 or R15. So now if we scroll down over here, I'm going to indent this a little bit so that it'll be easier to distinguish. And then we can add something right here. So I could say if rig type is equal to R15, then we can go through and reference some of the animations that R6 characters don't have. Like in this case, you could do something like this and put it right there. And of course, you'll need another end because you need an end for every if then statement. In this case, this would end it here. And then this one would end the rig type if then statement. And then after this end right here, because it's checking for the player's team, we can add an else if statement to decide what would happen if the player's character type is actually R6. So now we could say else if rig type is equal to R6, and then we could go on and do the same thing. The reason why we're putting this outside of this end is because this end is specifically for this part of the script. If we were to put it inside of here, it would act like another else if for the player dot team. So we wouldn't be able to get to this part unless the character's rig type was already R15. And now I'll have a draft of this inside of the model that I put into the description inside of the important links section. 
inside of a completely separate script if you do want to utilize this method, if you are allowing multiple different character types into the game. But for now, that's going to end this tutorial for here. If you do have any further questions or if something isn't working, you can feel free to comment down below and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. I hope that this was helpful for you. I'm always open to feedback, so if there's anything that you didn't like about it or things that I could just improve on generally, then please let me know so I can make my tutorials better for you in the future. I do have a tutorial playlist that you can find through the card at the top right of the screen if you are interested in checking out over 20 other episodes within this series. Now, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>